So good morning again. Uh, thanks for joining our uh, April 21st COAD meeting, uh, which I think it might be better to refer to as, as a, a briefing, as uh, this format of this meeting is a, a bit different than some of the other meetings being facilitated. Um, and it's part of just the evolving uh, structure of the COAD. For, uh, I know some folks have been with the journey since the beginning, some may be their first call. We welcome you to, to this meeting. Um, I'm gonna give a, a quick background just for, for those who may be joining as well as a refresher for, for those who've been on, on, on what our COAD is and, and its purpose. It's a, a collaborative that is trying to uh, coordinate resources and response activities during this pandemic, both looking at the hearing now needs of people within our community, as well as looking uh, with a lens towards the recovery phase of this work. Um, that's a little bit down the road in the horizon, but uh, we are hopeful that the collaboration that is forming uh, through this co-ed will position us well to, to be working together for the long term to do uh, our best job possible in meeting the needs of, of people, uh, as well as uh, ensuring we can provide levels of st stability for the various organizations that are also uh, experiencing challenge during this time. Um, there, uh, I, I referred to this sort of as a briefing because the format of this particular meeting is a bit less engaging. Uh, it's more uh, informational updates uh, and it's an evolving kind of structure. Now that uh, over the past two weeks, uh, we went from just one call to establishing a set of teams. This will be a space to get a, a brief update on what the other teams are working on, uh, what the challenges that are arising that may be beyond the scope of their team and wanna be offered out for others to help strategize around. Um, and also it could be a space uh, hopefully to celebrate um, the great work that is happening within our community. I want to note uh, that this is not the only space for information. There are briefings that happen weekly and daily. Uh, they're listed on the, the PowerPoint slide in front of you, the mayor of East St. Louis um, holds a weekly briefing on Facebook, Mondays at 11. The St. Clair County Emergency Management Agency does a daily briefing at 3.30, uh, and the Illinois governor does a daily briefing at 2.30. We will add to this list if there are other uh, briefings, but th those are all spaces to, to gather information. We also are trying to streamline the storage of information and meeting notes from all of our uh, co-ed teams that can be accessed on a Google folder, which is at tinyurl.com backslash co-ed files. That is where you will have access to the audio recordings or video recordings from these meetings, notes from these meetings, as well as now notes from various team meetings. Um, and within all of those, there's, there's plenty of information on resources as well as highlighting needs. So if, if any of you are wanting to dig in, uh, we encourage you to do so. We're trying to make it as accessible. Later on in the call, we're going to be uh, talking about a few different efforts underway to streamline the information about resources to, to, to make sort of, I, I won't say it's a, a one-stop shop type of resource, but, but there are a few different efforts underway to, to try to help streamline information. We'll be talking about that, that later. Again, just you know, thinking through what, what the purpose of today's call is and, and the format. Um, we are open to recommendations on how we can adjust. Uh, we've had high call volumes between 50 and 80 people, which makes it a little bit difficult to facilitate. Uh, a full range conference call. So, so bear with us as we get move this information along and uh, would encourage you if you are wanting to, to engage more and share input, the teams that are set up is really the space where, where we facilitate that more. Uh, there's one other link on the screen for those who are on the call. It's tinyurl.com backslash coad2020. Um, and that's if you want to be joined on one of those teams, that's a way we can plug you in. Uh, so just want to share that information. Um, first on the agenda, we've, we've 
kind of made it a point to uh, have a, a weekly update on how the COVID-19 virus is impacting or, if, or what the numbers are in terms of infecting people in our community. Eastside Health District has been providing us with those updates and joining us again today is uh, Ms. Linda Joyner, who's gonna give us the what our numbers currently look like. Um, and as you see on the screen, um, there is a link uh, where you can find information by zip code on, on confirmed COVID cases. Um, I will uh, reference that link, it's a long one uh, later on, but I wanna turn it over to Linda to give an update on, on where we stand in East Side Health District. And for those who, who are familiar, the geography of East Side Health District is contiguous with four townships. That's the East St. Louis Township, the Stites Township, Canteen Township and Centerville Township. Townships are not necessarily the same boundaries as municipalities. So there are multiple municipalities within those boundaries. Um, I, you know, we, we probably, I'll make it a point at next week's meeting to provide a map just so people have an awareness of it. Um, but the school districts, if that's helpful for folks that fall within it is Cahokia, East St. Louis and Brooklyn Lovejoy. Um, and it touches a few others, got little corners of others, but those are the predominant uh, sections. And Linda's affirming that I'm correct. I see her nodding her head. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I got the geographies right because it's important. We want to make sure people know what the <clears throat> area is and it's, and it's being representative of the, what we're referring to as a catchment of Greater East St. Louis area. So Linda, without further ado, thank you for joining us and look forward to your update. Okay. Um, testing, testing. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, you made my job easier, Evan. Uh, good. Uh, and by encapsulating uh, the townships, uh, there are, I believe, three health districts in Illinois. We are a health district. We have been in existence since 1937. And um, it's my understanding that we evolved from a TB, tuberculosis outbreak, many years ago. We get the question all of the time. You got St. Clair County, you've got Eastside East Health District. Um, Eastside Health District was here first. And as our contiguous um, um, communities uh, began to enlarge, St. Clair County was added. So our numbers, Eastside Health District's numbers, roll into St. Clair County numbers. But as of 8.30 today, Eastside Health District received notification of uh, the following test results, 201 of them for Eastside Health District of COVID-19 cases, uh, our jurisdictional townships is Evan mentioned is East St. Louis Canteen, Centerville, and Stite, all of whom reside in St. Clair County. We had 89 persons to test positive, uh, 106 tested negative, six, the results are pending. We have, uh, we're waiting on the results from six persons, and we have five existing fatalities ranging in age from under one year to 90 years, and it encompasses all of the zip codes in our township areas. Um, we extend our sympathy to all the families who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, wherever they may be, and we continue to pray for those who test positive, and we ask that God will grant them the strength to recover and may our community continue to heal. Um, social distancing uh, is imperative and it still remains a must. We're now moving into a phase where we're asking our residents to wear masks. If you're going to go out and find yourself um, in a situation where social distancing may not be prevalent all of the time. You may go to a grocery store. Some people do the social distancing, some people don't. Keep your mask there. Uh, I carry gloves. 
and uh, for the shopping carts and the like. But um, we're, we're where we should be uh, forsaking the deaths. And uh, I really hate that we deal with numbers so much because those of us who are privy to the information, we see names and we know those persons. So uh, let's continue to pray for each other. This really puts a weight on us emotionally and uh, we're all feeling it. So uh, we're doing a great team effort. I'm so grateful that we have not resorted to protesting uh, what should be common sense and, and science. So I uh, appreciate um, your listening. If you have any questions, uh, you can get those to me. If I don't have an answer, I'll get one for you. There was one question uh, in the chat box, but also want to acknowledge uh, these, are, these aren't just numbers, these are lives. Um, and so those families in our, in our thoughts and our prayers. The, the question was, was the infant death related to COVID-19? I believe the answer is oh, yes, but any other information? Yes, right. Any death that uh, we report is COVID-19 related. And uh, let me hasten to say that they are beginning to track um, age. Well, they've always done that, but um, racial ethnicity. So we, because we are disproportionately impacted, uh, that's, <laughs> we've always known that. We've just never really, for some reason, done anything about it, but it is a glaring reality now uh, with this. So we're tracking ages, we're tracking gender. Let, let's track the racial components of everybody affected. And we can learn something from this. But all of the deaths that we report are COVID-19 related. And then we have one more question that I'm seeing in the chat box that there are um for people who are, are having symptoms that aren't necessarily COVID-19 related, um, there's a lot of clinics and other doctor offices are called. Um, I would say if someone has a doctor or doesn't have a doctor, what would you recommend for that person to receive care for, for whatever their ailment is non-COVID related? Um, this is, is probably gonna be an answer. I hope I don't sound flippant, but whatever you did prior to COVID-19, continue to do that. Um, we have a new testing site, and Steve will address this a little bit later. I, I anxiously await what he has to say. Uh, this is a time of high pollen. Um, a lot of us are coughing and sneezing, um, and we may think that we may be candidates for a test. You can be screened at the number over the phone. They will screen you. And they just happen to know what's COVID, uh, signs of COVID-19 and what may be signs of allergies or just a cough. And with the weather changing the way that it has been lately, uh, all of us are, are coughing, sneezing, doing something. But uh, continue to do what you did for your uh, health care and refer yourselves to the testing sites if you have any concern. And they will advise you also as to what you should do if uh, it may be just the sniffles or whatever. COVID-19 symptoms, they're coughs, but they're, it's, it's a dry cough. It's something unlike you've ever had. Uh, the fevers are out of the roof fevers, some of which you've never had before. And I understand your concern, the majority of us in the, in the neighborhood, we have underlying conditions. We're comorbid, and it's not just one. 
is two, three, and four that we are smitten with. So I would be, uh, I would be happy if you would leave that kind of diagnosis to your doctor. They'll inform you and send you in the right direction. Thank you, Linda. Uh, and for those who are using the chat box, uh, I also know some people are on the phone. Steve from SIH Health, uh, SIH F Healthcare um, just noted in, in, in the chat box that the, their clinics are still open and providing telehealth services for, for all ailments. Uh, I'm sure you can go to their websites to access their numbers if you don't already have a, a primary care physician or that person's not currently operating. Um, Linda mentioned that SIHF also uh, uh, it's opened a testing center last week. I didn't um, ask Steve ahead of this call to provide any data yet on, on what the volume has been, but you know, Steve, if there is information, we would ask that you drop it in the chat box, um, but then would put a request out now for next week, knowing that it'll be a, a full week of operation this week, would like to, to have an update on the, the usage rates and, and, and how that testing center is going. We, uh, I also wanna note that Francella Jackson from the village of Cahokia informed us that, that Cahokia has also been uh, approved or is a prospect for a testing center. Uh, details uh, have not been yet determined on when it'll open, but there, there is a likelihood of having a, an additional testing center. For the sake of time, we are going to um, just move on within our agenda. Uh, mentioned the, the the county briefing happens later today mm -hmm. more of this information will be shared uh, and if you do have questions the chat box is a tool to do that uh, and we will try to facilitate things in between calls so thank you again Linda no problem. we're now going to, to move into our uh, team updates um, First up, and just for context for folks, these teams are, are a combination of coordination teams as well as a support team, that's our communications. Um, as this COAD has been evolving, one of the, the, the beauties of this work is it's shown the existing infrastructure we've had for collaboration. And, and so really the, the, the makeup of these teams are a combination of existing coalitions um, that, are, that are broadening the table, so to speak, with more people engaged, um, focusing on this issue. So within the child care education and enrichment space, um, the, the East St. Louis Youth Development Alliance is a, a collaborative that's been, again, in existence uh, and doing uh, leading the charge and ensuring there's communication and coordination happening. Um, I believe we have a, a, a representative to, to give an update. I want to allow her to unmute her line. All right, Remy, thank you. You've unmuted your line. The floor is yours. You have heard Remy's voice previously, uh, giving a, a, an update just from a youth perspective. She's also been an active member of this table, and we appreciate her giving an update. All right, good morning, guys. As you know, my name is Remy, and I'm part of Love Hub. So in our child care education and enrichment meeting, we basically discuss how the online learning is going, what kind of support we need, um, youth leadership, different announcements and resources that we found out and other needs that we have. And one of the main things that we discussed was trying to connect with the kids on their level. And given that we're youth, we're, we're really into the technology and things like that. So we figured since we're always on our phones anyway, why not do something like Instagram Live or Facebook Live and just do different sorts of things. And a few of the ideas we had was we could have a group who does like art and things like that, well performing arts, which could be dance, poetry, anything like that. And then we could have another one where it's like, okay, let's just have a simple conversation because some people are just stuck at home with nothing to do. And then we were trying to see how we could like benefit the kids as far as learning. Cause we know because of the quarantine and because of COVID-19 is gonna really put a dent in the learning curve. So we're trying to figure out how we could help balance that out and things of that nature. And I think it went very well. Everyone got to, I feel like, <clears throat> everyone got to say how they felt. I think the things that we came up with are very realistic and I could see them happening if we really plan it and organize it and like promote for it. I think everything will go well and I'm looking forward to it and bonding with the kids and stuff like that. So. Thank you, Remy, for that update and, and, and 
and, and other members of Love's continued leadership in, in being our compass in guiding us. Uh, if you, uh, I'll drop in the chat box a contact information. If you have other, if any of you out there have young people who are, may want to be engaged in this work, we, we welcome them. We want, they, they, they have a space at the table uh, and their leadership is needed. If you have questions, um, please drop them in the chat box. But thank you, Remy. Um, another coalition in this space uh, that provided update last week is the Greater East St. Louis Early Learning Partnership. Um, there's no real new update this week other than just uh, a continued challenge and need for cleaning supplies um, for child care centers that are providing um, child care for essential workers. So, so that, you know, is a, a, an ask that's going to go out to the, to the mass care team, just, uh, and this is a, a good way to, you know, connect the dots between our teams. But if there's others on this call who may not be a part of that team and has access to cleaning supplies. That's an, uh, a request coming from the, the child care uh, network. So just want to elevate that and uh, thank everyone who, who is providing child care for essential workers. Our um, next update is uh, the uh, emergency assistance team. Uh, this is a team that covers financial assistance and also housing resource and placement. Um, not much to update today that's different from last week's call. Um, St. Uh, Clair County, it will be the recipient of stimulus dollars to provide financial assistance. Their application is um, on their website today, even though they don't have all of the specifics on the funding amount and, and so forth, but uh, they are beginning to receive applications. I will drop the website uh, in the chat box for those on the phone. If you simply Google St. Clair County government, you will easily access their page. The utility, the, the financial assistance being provided is um, ex more expansive than typical. Um, they, they are providing uh, utility bill is something typically not covered will be something considered as well as uh, potential for transportation uh, assistance, both paying for car, uh, notes as well as other means. So that is a, a really important centralized access point for, for people to um, explore. Um, there's an obviously other agencies that are providing assistance here. Um, a number of people who are on this call are actually on another call right now that, that's going long. So, so one of the people we had queued up to update hasn't joined yet, but uh, I am going to drop in the chat box information for the St. Clair County Homeless Action Council's um, meeting. They actually have a meeting today at two o'clock via Zoom. It is open to all who want to join and who are uh, concerned about um, those who are unhoused, either unhoused prior to this pandemic or unhoused as a result of this pandemic. Uh, this group is also looking at those who have become uh, temporarily unhoused due to being diagnosed with COVID-19 and needing to have a, a temporary placement so they do not affect others in their home. So if you are interested in any of those matters and issues, uh, again, I'm gonna drop the information um, in the chat box for folks to join. Um, I believe that I might have another update related to the financial, but I need to grab my notes. So if it's okay, I'm going to turn it over to Hannah Sherrard to give a, a mass care update. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the mass care team met yesterday morning, so I'll just share a couple quick updates. Uh, and then um, if you have any other questions, drop them in the chat box and uh, we can touch base. Um, a few quick things. First of all, the uh, St. Louis Area Food Bank uh, is experiencing some shortages of shelf-stable items. So you might find if you or those you know are going to food pantries that there are a lot of perishable things like produce, but um, those like canned and dry goods um, are running low right now given some um, challenges in um, you know, just acquiring materials. Um, one challenge that the team has identified is finding baby formula. Uh, this is another thing that's really proving difficult. Um, and so there are stores are, are, you know, requiring restrictions so people can only maybe get one can at a time. Um, one thing that was noted on the call is that um, WIC recipients should be able to get whatever is allotted to them. 
um, despite whatever store restrictions are in place. So if you're encountering folks that are saying they're running into this barrier, please uh, have them reach out to Eastside Health District or call the 1-800 number on their card. Um, one issue that the team is tackling right now is taking on uh, distribution of food and goods to those that are homebound. So um, there are already some organizations that are doing this, um, but we're trying to kind of figure out a system to make sure that everybody who needs that service um, can receive it. One thing to know is that um, you can go to a food pantry as proxy for someone. So uh, if you know folks that are in need of that service, that's something that you can do for them, or if you have access to transportation to be able to do that. Uh, and then the last thing that we're working on as a team is uh, putting together some training materials and ensuring that those who have PPE to donate can get it to those that are uh, distributing those materials out to people working in food pantries and such, um, making sure that they're safe. So that's uh, quick details on what we're working on in mass care. We meet Monday morning at 10 a.m. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Hannah, uh, and all those serving on the mass care team. I just wanna reiterate the, one of the issues identified is uh, certain stores not uh, that are shortchanging WIC recipients on what they can expense. Uh, in our follow-up communication this week, um, we're gonna have information on what to do if you know of someone experiencing that. The, uh, we were told that the Illinois state government is, is taking this very seriously and acting quickly. Uh, we, we, we haven't experienced that yet, but that's what we've been, been told. Um, uh, this is not a time for people in need to be shortchanged of the, of the resources that they uh, are deserving of. Um, going back real quick to the emergency assistance team, I'm sorry I didn't look at my notes ahead of time. There were just a couple other things to, to, to note. Obviously, right now, the, the, the high volume is for temporary housing placements. Um, resources are, are draining in terms of funds available for motel and hotel stays. Um, there's, you know, continual need for, for donation in that area. Um, as far as it relates to volumes for utility requests, they are there, but they are not as active because there's the moratorium on shutoffs. There is a huge anticipation for this um, being elevated once the moratorium is lifted. So providers that usually do utility assistance are, are preparing and bracing themselves, but also knowing that more resources will be needed. There was information shared uh, about a potential bill uh, at the federal level to provide relief um, uh, for utility bills. Um, we are going to be accessing that information and we'll share that out as well, um, just so people are aware uh, of what's accessible. The last thing that came out from a, a, a housing slash financial needs is that uh, the one of the things that's occurring as a way to offset spread of COVID-19 is the release of people incarcerated with low level offenses. And, and, and that's creating a, a, a large volume of people. Uh, someone uh, noted yesterday that for the Metro East area, there's a projection of 2000 people who will be returning over the next several weeks. Uh, and, and those are individuals whose needs will, will range pretty high in terms of housing and otherwise. And so uh, that was a projected number. It didn't come with timelines or specific geographies, but, but that information is currently being sought out and, and we're trying to create mechanisms at least for how to be proactive in, in meeting the needs of returning citizens. So those were uh, a couple of things that uh, were coming up uh, in that call. Gonna turn it over to communications team for an update. I'm sorry you broke up. Did you say communication? I did. Oh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Shante Ford, and update for the communications team. We had our first meeting last week, um, Wednesday, I believe it was the 15th. Um, we had about 15 attendees total that attended the meeting. Um, and our agenda was really focusing on what is it that everyone was familiar with or what was happening as it related to communications and you know, marketing for um, different organizations for, in, I guess, in terms of reaching the larger body of the community. Um, so we did introductions and um, 
then discuss team scope and strategies, as well as any project or ideas that anyone had as it related to helping to really um, streamline information to really reach as many people as possible. Um, one that one um, initiative or idea that came out of the meeting is something that was raised previously, I, I believe in a general co-ed meeting, um, which was the uh, needs to know or like information guide document. So um, we discussed that to some extent and um, that is like top priority for the group um, right now. And um, we are working through how we will present that um, coming soon, I would say within the next week or so. Um, so our next like follow-up items will be to, uh, and we also discussed like roles for the team because we know this team will be a lot of um, hands-on and like um, development possibly for the, for the other teams. So we discussed like what roles everyone could take on to really support the um, success of really moving this co-ed and the work that everyone is doing. Um, we sent out a survey to gauge what everyone was interested in as well as their availability. Um, what resulted from that in terms of availability, our meetings are gonna look to be on Mondays from um, 2.30 to 3.30 and our, our next meeting will be next Monday. Um, we are still open to anyone who's interested to be a, a part of the team, um, but just know that it's really hands-on and, and I don't like just being conscious that it may require additional work if you don't have the time, then it's totally understandable because this work is consuming a lot of um, our time and focus. So moving forward, co the communications team meetings will be Mondays and afternoons starting at 2.30 and um, we'll be sending out, well, I believe a part of the general email for the team, for the general co-ed team that will probably include that information for our, our meetings. Um, that concludes my update. Thank you, Shante. And uh, as reference um, to the survey that went out, if you want to join a team, it's it's listed on, on the screen right now, tinyurl.com backslash coad2020 if you haven't filled that out already. Or if you filled it out and decide you did want to plug into a different team, email us at eastsidealigned at gmail.com or put it in the chat box. Um, a lot of moving parts. I know that was a lot of information to download. Um, uh, again, in addition to um, having this as a form to share information, it's recorded if you want to go back to it. Uh, it's in that file folder I mentioned. It's also being uploaded to YouTube, uh, but we also will have meeting notes accessible. So if you were writing voraciously, know that you, you can cross check them uh, on some other information. Um, one thing I'll note, two things I'll note about communications in, in terms of our resources, they, they are changing consistently. Anyone who's ever taken on the task of doing any type of directory or resource guide knows it's a, it's a challenge. Um, you know, we, we want it to be relevant and we want it to be going to a point, Remy mentioned, accessible, right? Something that really connects with and speaks to young people and engages them uh, so that they can connect with it. We're, we're taking all those different things in consideration and hope to have something out uh, shortly. Um, the other note on communications that I'll, I'll lift up is actually a segue into our, our next presenter to talk about an initiative happening across the river in St. Louis called Prepare STL. Um, this is a, not to steal all of uh, Angela Fle uh, Fleming Brown's thunder, but this is a, a both a communications from a marketing standpoint, but also a ground level outreach standpoint. I want to thank uh, Kay Rice um, Bay, who's, on, who's been a, a, on this uh, calls for, for connecting the dots to, to know what's happening with Prepare STL and advocating that it get um, brought over to this side of the river. So thank you, Kay, for, for your advocacy and, and, and vision of, of seeing how we could do it. Um, I mentioned that this call is sort of a briefing, but actually after um, uh, Angie talks, we want to actually open up for, for some engagement to see how people can support this effort. So um, Angie, I'm going to turn the floor to you. Thank you, Evan, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Evan mentioned, I'm working with an initiative that's called Prepare STL. Um, and it's really a grassroots initiative that was started by 
um, organizations, community organizations in St. Louis that really wanted to ensure that many of our under, underserved areas, uh, which are mostly people of color and African-American communities who have been disproportionately impacted by um, the coronavirus, receives targeted information of um, the disease as well as ways they can take action to help prevent the spread of disease and different things they can do um, to cope and stress through this crisis. And so we started out as, um, Evan mentioned, it's a traditional communication strategy. So we have a flyer, there have been different advertisements as well as a social media strategy. Uh, but one of the things I think that makes this unique is how we have developed this outreach uh, portion or kind of uh, portion of the uh, campaign where we have partnered with over 80 community health workers. Um, and for for those who are not familiar with the term, we say community health workers. These are individuals who live in the communities. Uh, many of our underserved communities, um, they're residents there, they shop there, they live there, they have friends and neighbors there um, who we, they are paid uh, in um, several instances and hired throughout our organizations to help carry the message. Um, and connect back some of our systems level stuff to our community members. And so they volunteered to help visit some of the still high traffic areas that are still open in many of our neighborhoods like grocery stores. Um, this could include even um, smaller grocery stores, gas stations, family dollars, um, check cash and places are still open here, liquor stores. Um, really reaching those places where people are still congregating and gathering where they might not be uh, practicing the social distancing rules and posting these flyers, um, yard signs, sandwich boards, and other types of media um, to get the word out to community. Um, and so we've been doing that for the past two weekends. Um, and again, it's really, they're dressed in their PPE to help reduce their impact of the disease. And we try to limit their time out in the community. And so we call the places ahead of time to know where the post materials and people are in and out, just putting up the literature as much as possible. Um, and then the next phase of this work is really how do we get um, masks to these community members? Because one of the things that we noticed is a lot of stores that we've been going in, um, the workers didn't have masks, they didn't have PPE to help protect them. And so um, thinking about how do we even help um, get some protection to the community members. And many people that had the materials, they were not wearing them appropriately. And so more communication, and we have a website that has more targeted communication of how to actually use the PPE when you have it um, and wear the right, use your gloves correctly so that people are not um, continually putting themselves at risk of this uh, disease, even though they have the right protection. So. Um, very targeted messaging. We've been doing it. I think we are starting in the African American community. We are hoping to move um, to the immigrant and new American communities that we have um, in the next few weeks. And then we are starting a faith um, campaign um, as well. And so Kay, as Evan mentioned, Kay thought this would be a great initiative for East St. Louis. And we know you all have a lot of underserved areas. Uh, prepare STL might not be the name you want to use or different messaging, so definitely an opportunity to, I think, um, update this and adjust it to meet the needs that you all have in your community. Thank you, Angie. Um, and, you know, feel free, folks, to, to ask questions about this in the, in the chat box. Um, you know, a couple things to, to highlight, obviously, is one, the, the the communication literature is a resource, but the things I want to elevate again is, is community health workers. Uh, this this is a, a this is a name, and it's an emerging kind of profession. But it really is, in this case, reference to individuals who are going to be providing direct outreach. And what Prepare SDL has developed the infrastructure for just again is training for those individuals on on their own safe practices on how to how to you know make sure that they're not putting themselves at risk with this virus. Um, they also are um, helping to supply the information that is needed. Um, the com there's a and there's a few different ways that we can implement this in our community, right? Because um, the outreach workers that are are engaging in this are being compensated, um, and so there is a, a cost to doing this uh, and to doing this well and doing this in, in a way that honors people's time. 
but we also know that there are uh, staff within a lot of organizations right now who, who have uh, availability and time and maybe could be repurposed to do some of the outreach. So we are really wanting to see uh, in the chat, you know, within the chat box or in a follow-up, if you are an organization that has staff that you could allocate to be part of an outreach team, uh, we would want to start um, taking a, an inventory of that, uh, uh, of that list. Um, or if you may not have staff, but want to contribute financially to supporting or sponsoring um, the compensation for outreach workers, we also are looking for that. The RHC, the Regional Health Commission, which uh, Angie is the, the CEO of, is willing to serve as the fiscal agent and handle the back end uh, facilitation of, of payment for, for new workers we'd be bringing on. And so this is something that we've heard throughout the calls um, uh, all the other weeks and in our other team meetings is the, the challenge of information just not penetrating to people, right? Um, if they're, especially if they're not accessing it via the web uh, or, or other things. So we really um, are looking to see who is interested um, and, and the chat box is a, a great way to, to help us take an initial inventory. Um, but if you wanna give us some thought and then email us later, please let us know. The other thing that we could use help with, we've already begun this process, but is identifying those areas where people are congregating um, that we would want to um, kind of target as, a, as an outreach location um, to distribute information about the virus and the resources available. So those are the uh, two asks. I see activity happening in the chat box, so I'm just going to glance on that to, to uh, lift up some questions. There's a question, Angie, about uh, you mentioned there's a faith com component to prepare. Um, mm -hmm. Share more about that. Yes, so one of the um, communities here that have been really um, active in out, uh, asking for materials and ways to um, inform their congregations is a clergy coalition that we have in St. Louis. So it is a group of several, maybe hundreds of African American churches um, that's trying to get information out. And so we are partnering with them to post materials um, on their lots. Uh, which will help inform communities, but also since many of them have moved to virtual services, how can we tap into some of like their websites, um, their Facebook pages to get information out to their congregations. And so that is the next phase of targeted uh, communications we're working on as well. Great. Well, seeing a lot of uh, people raising their hands to uh, want to be involved in helping to mobilize people, which is really good, and, and allocate staff time, which is super exciting. There's uh, questions about the graphics and visuals. Would I be correct that you can download these visuals on the Prepare STL site? Yes, they're available on the Prepare STL site in several different languages, too, if that's something that's a need here um, for your communities as well as the website can be translated into different languages. Which is a huge resource. Um, and mm -hmm. also questions about uh, where people can obtain PPE. So we've been partnering with our um, health department for PPE, the city health department here. Um, it is very hard to come by PPE. And so that's the, one of the partnerships that we've been utilizing as well as donations from different community members. Very good. I'm not sure if there's anything efforts in on the east side of there, the health departments or your um, other agencies will have access to those things, but uh, we can definitely help connect as much as possible. Well, I'm uh, surprised and excited by the uh, responses we're seeing in the chat for being interested. Um, I will say, you know, this is, uh, it's kind of one of those like short burst of, of intensity in terms of like getting it organized. It will require a good number of just initial engagement to, to get the maps of, of where to, and that's actually, um, and you may have mentioned this, forgive me, um, with RHC and their partners, there, there's folks who help produce the, the maps to, to uh, uh, navigate where people are going. So, so that's actually already started utilizing the zip codes within the Eastside Health District footprint. But again, more specific information from folks on where people are congregating are helpful. Um, we have set up a series of co-ed teams. Um, this is in part communications, but this is really a broader branch around uh, outreach. 
Um, as folks are listing in here their, their levels of interest in being engaged, I'm telling you now we could really use some people who say we want to help lead this. And, and what I mean by that is help kind of coordinate everyone who's wanting to be engaged um, and, and run a point. Um, and, and I would really encourage that organizations who are currently doing some level of, of ground level outreach, um, as well as have um, the means to, to support others in this time and doing it would be ones to step up. This isn't uh, as much of a situation where, where, where people, it's creating more work is the ask, right? And so we don't wanna overstretch anyone, but ha knowing who is uh, interested will be good will, will be something we're asking you know we want to figure out so our next step is to take the information of people expressing interest in the chat box and do a follow-up email to coordinate um, next steps and so please be thinking about the role you want to play if it's just uh, we're ready to be to be deployed great if it's I can help coordinate some of the logistics and the mapping great if I want to be kind of the volunteer support Great, so, so we'll map out the different activities. We, we are very grateful for, for the, the framework that RHC has, has put together. Um, this is very needed. Um, one thing that, that we, we will preface later, and I know uh, RHC preface, we want to ensure folks who may have any underlying health conditions not take on the role of being an outreach worker. Uh, that's probably a given, doesn't you know? But it should be elevated that that there are a lot of folks who don't have underlying conditions, and 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 this is a a real good space for them. If you are someone who wants to be a part and have an underlying condition, there's other ways you can can help with the back end organizing of it. So um, I'm just checking the chat box real quick. I I see a lot more uh, lifts li uh, things being uplifted of wanting to help. I'm I'm. Uh, not seeing any other questions. Uh, well, there's a note about training. A training we would schedule, right? And Dr. Yes. Uh, Punch from BJC is the one who facilitates that training. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just about to mention that when you said it, um, definitely people who um, have some kind of impact in the immune system, they're already feeling sick or they have a current disease, we have asked them not to be a part of this. Uh, we do a full training. It's about an hour or two where um, we walk the workers through the process. Dr. Punch, who is a trauma surgeon, actually comes on and talks to them about social distancing. She trains them on how to wear the proper materials and how to use it correctly um, in ways to kind of reduce their uh, risk of catching the disease. And so definitely a full training. And I think it's recorded um, so we can work with you all to have the same level of training to offer to your people as well. Well, this is something that we're going to move into action on. Um, bear with us. You know, we're just going to make sure we have everyone's contact and 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 go forth. So, um, this is going to create, like I said, more work, and it's going to create, I think, a whole lot more impact too. Uh, we we heard the numbers earlier in the call; they are uh, rising. With the testing center being uh, present, they we we may hear more uh, about it. Um, for those who have accessibility to the chat box, uh, uh, Steve from SIHF did provide uh, some initial numbers on testing to date, and it looked like only one uh, tested positive, I believe. Um, let me scroll up real quick, bear with me. Um, That's so, correct. Yep. It's, uh, the info was 63 people were screened so far with 24 qualifying for a test and only one was uh, positive. That's that is a positive for so far, but you know uh, we we were we're going to stand firm and hope, um, as well as be uh, preparing ourselves for for what may come. Excuse right. me, you two. Forgive me. All right. So just checking. Um, Again, questions and ideas, please. Uh, it seems like we've gotten a lot of it in the um, chat box already, um, but we do welcome feedback on, on these uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we, it's emerging in terms of the structure and flow. We want them to be valuable. We want them to, to be a good utilization of your time. 
Uh, and so if we're doing a good job at that, we'd like to know. If there are things we can do better at, we'd like to know too. We, we, we are looking to adjust as we can, um, are incredibly grateful for all those who are engaging in the various teams. And you know, I, I don't just put as a threshold of being on a team is how you're engaging. We know everyone's on this call because they're active in some way or another and making an impact. So we thank you for that. Uh, we how are, are you? three, sorry, we just got, sorry. Um, three minutes to the hour, you know, we normally close with uh, a quote. Um, this week we're closing with a quote, but next week uh, one of our young people uh, has offered to clo close us with a, a live spoken word piece. So, so if you're one that doesn't typically hang on till the end, you have incentive to do so for next week. But for this week, just wanna close with uh, one quote um, that, you know, for those on the phone, it's kites, rise highest against the wind, not with it. So whether we're talking about a kite or a bird flying or an airplane, uh, when you're going against a lot of challenge and a lot of adversity, know that it's also the opportunity where we can fly the highest and the farthest. And so we are in, in a, a period where there's a lot of wind blowing against us. Um, history has shown and history has shown for, for East St. Louis in terms of the level of resiliency that we have the opportunity to rise highest against it. So let's, let's embrace the wind. Let's put it under our wings and, and keep going forth and, and making an impact. Uh, I'm so excited to see the impact that will be um, made through the PREPARE uh, initiative in our community. So I uh, want to thank all of you so much. Um, give an opportunity. I'm going to stop my screen. This is something we did last week where people can just give, get a moment to see everyone who's on this call if you ha uh, weren't able to scroll through before. Uh, and if your video is not on, uh, let's turn it on because I think it's always important for, for the people who are making the impact in this community just to have space to see each other uh, and just know that we're in this together um, and just I mean, what I, when I see a screen like this, I just see the face of, of folks who, who are incredible, inspiring people. Uh, last week, we gave the quote of the helpers. You are the helpers and the transformation makers. So I want to thank you. And for those who, who want to stick around for a few minutes, I can, I'm going to unmute the line if anyone wants to share any celebrations in our final minutes. Um, I'm going to take the first second because I'm really excited about this and I did get uh, Integrated Health Network to confirm with me that Metro East is a hot important target area for them. So I just dropped in the chat that they're going to be hiring 10 community health workers. There are part time positions that applications are due April 27th and I can share with Evan the application. It just got announced yesterday and um, again, this is a big priority. I did get them to commit to saying they are interested in hiring people from Metro East, fully recognizing they don't have the full relationships on the side of the river. So I really highly encourage us to share it with our networks and try to get within that 10 as many Metro East people um, within that team, just because I don't want our side of the river to not be a priority just because they didn't know who to reach out to. Thank you. Uh, this is Rick from the Volunteer Center. I have a quick uh, celebration for this co-ed and our regional co-ed efforts. We're working closely with a company called Slalom, which is a, uh, they're, a, they're a technology consulting firm, and they've offered to build a platform that will support co-eds specifically around supplies. So having an inventory of which entity needs supplies two weeks from now, which entities need supplies right away, uh, which, which entities have plenty of supplies. And so um, it's, it's something that we're calling the R3 exchange tool. It's a way for partners to post a need or post an offer to um, share products or supplies. And so um, for this first release, it's gonna be released hopefully in a couple of weeks in the middle of May. Um, the developers have, have uh, identified four topics, food, toilet paper, sanitary items, and diapers as this first uh, iteration of this resource. And that list can be expanded, but we want to use these categories for review and demonstration. So just wanted to share that 
um, state-of-the-art technology is coming to us to support the needs not only for COVID-19, but other disasters down the road, whether it's flooding, tornado, et cetera. So we certainly acknowledge our partners at, at um, Slalom for developing this. I have one other um, celebration I completely forgot, and you may have saw a slide go through that we didn't touch on. Uh, this week is After School Professionals Appreciation Week. Uh, while we're remiss that after school programming isn't currently happening, there are a cadre of youth development professionals in our community that have not stopped working or stopped engaging uh, young people during this time. So just want to take a moment to, to celebrate all of the people who work in after school and summer uh, programming um, for all of the work you do year round. Uh, no, this is a tough time to, to, to be away from the young people that you work with uh, physically, um, but we just want to lift you up and appreciate. We're going to be uh, celebrating you a bit on Facebook as well. So for those on the call who, who have worked or do work in the after school space, uh, we, we just salute you and thank you. It's also National Volunteer Week, so also thank your volunteers and appreciation for all that they do. Before um, I got a, so, oh, go ahead. Right here. So real quick, um, I just want to let everybody know that if you have, um, we talk about our community workers and our frontline responders. If you have any um, certain group that you want them to, I mean, they're needing, you know, individual snacks, refreshments, stuff like that, or even just um, a lunch or weekend staff or evening staff, like dinner provided, let me know. Um, I started a campaign a couple of weeks ago, and so now I'm like, literally driving around different um, areas all over St. Clair, Madison, and other counties that I can reach to provide um, food, snacks, and stuff like that for like health department, hospitals. Right now I'm getting ready to go to Fairmont City and drop off um, lunch for the police department. So anything like that that you can think of a group, let me know, send it to me so that way I can put them on my list. Um, the more money I get, the more I get out there and provide all the stuff that I need to for them. So just wanted to throw that out there to everybody. Thank you, Greg. Anyone can close us with a, a celebration? Something that may have inspired them this past week or want to give praise for? Landon just says hi, everybody. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> I think we can end on that. No, no. <laughs> it is a sweet face to end on. Hey, can I just say? Out of these co-ed meetings. Yeah. Great coworker, most of the time. <laughs> all right, I've kept you all four minutes after the hour, but I appreciate just the space to, to be in community with you for a moment. Uh, not the ideal, much rather be with, around the table, but thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, and again, uh, send us feedback to make this call as, as productive and helpful as possible. Other than that, this will be uploaded uh, later today. And we uh, see you next week, if not in some other space um, on the other teams. So thank you for all you're doing and have a great day.